Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ambassador. Um, thank you for being here this morning, and more importantly, thank you for your willingness to be considered for this critical nomination at this very important time in the world. You and I had the opportunity to speak a few weeks ago, which I very much appreciated, and one of the issues we talked about was the importance of empowering women as being a value that we should support in our foreign policy. And one of those aspects of empowering women has to do with women's health and ensuring that women have access to a full range of health care. If confirmed, you'll oversee the seat that the U.S. mission to the U.N. has on the executive board of UNFPA. As you know, that organization serves as the world's principal multilateral provider of family planning and reproductive health services and the largest global provider of maternal health care in humanitarian emergencies. But despite this, um, the previous administration used unfounded claims to deny U.S. funding for UNFPA. If you're confirmed, will you commit to working with the Office of Management and Budget to expeditiously release the funding Congress appropriated in December for fiscal year 2021? Absolutely, Senator. Thank you. And as you think about um, this position, will you also commit to working to restore American leadership in addressing um, values around empowering women and helping to ensure that women have access to um, a full range of reproductive health services that they need if they are going to play a significant role in to advance their education, participate in the economy, support their families and communities. All of that is related to women's health care. Uh, Senator, I can commit to you that I will be a leader on this issue. Uh, in New York is an issue that is personally uh, a priority uh, for me, and I'll look forward to working with you to advance our goals in this area. Thank you very much. Um, you talked in your opening statement about a resurging Russia, and one of the things we are seeing right now is mass demonstrations, some of the largest we've seen in recent years, um, and of course, Russia has jailed Alexei Navalny upon his return to the country. Russia, of course, is anytime the United States makes a statement about um, what's happening there with respect to de demonstrations and attacking demonstrators and um, repressing democratic activities, they accuse the United States of being behind those activities. As you think about this issue in your role at the UN, how do you counterbalance that? How do you build the support that we need there to respond to what Russia is doing when they're attacking us for being behind what's going on in the country? That's the diplomacy of the United Nations. Um, I heard yesterday on the news as I was preparing that President uh, Biden spoke to Vladimir uh, Putin yesterday and uh, that it was a very tough conversation. Uh, it's clear uh, to us that Russian actions against the U.S. have been aggressive and they have been adversarial. And we do have to respond uh, aggressively uh, to, to their actions. At the same time, we have to find a way to work with them in the Security Council on issues where we have common interests. Uh, I will look forward uh, to working with them on issues to, for example, address the situation in Iran, but I will not hesitate in my engagements with them to also press them on tough issues such as their interference in, in our election, uh, such as their cyber attacks uh, against the United States and uh, their own human rights uh, violations against their own people, including what happened to Navalny. Well, thank you. I also was very pleased to hear that that was a tough conversation and that President Biden took him on in terms of election interference, the disinformation, the cyber hacking of our government agencies, um, the bounties that they have put on our troops in Afghanistan, and a whole range of other aggressive activities, and I hope that that will be a way that we will continue to move forward. As you point out, there are areas where we should work together. I think the New START Treaty is one of those, but 
we need to take them on when they act aggressively towards the United States, and it's refreshing to have a president who is going to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you.